everybody, welcome to DEF CON 22. I'm here with Adar, one of our speakers. And uh, so why don't you tell us what were you talking about? What was your research? Um, well, I've been working on a new way of encrypting email. Um, basically taking the protections that we get from PGP and trying to integrate them directly into the protocols we use for email so that all of the magic can happen under the covers without a user having to worry about this laborious process of generating keys and finding keys for the person they want to talk to. Yeah, that whole web of trust the issue is the kill that works, PGP, right? right? I mean, well, and then keys rotate, and then it's old, and then you have to find the new key server. But it's, do you it's, trust the key it's server? It's a problem, and you know the thing is, it's very secure, but it's so secure that nobody can use it. Yeah. And so you don't think S mine is really a valid response, or it's it's or is a stopgap. It's an improvement. Um, you know, one of the ways of looking at dark mail is as a hybridization of the best ideas of PGP and the best ideas of S mine. So one of the good ideas that came with S mine was this trust anchor. Only in the case of S mine, the trust anchor is the certificate the authority. Is, right, and that's a nightmare right there, as we know. Well, with the dark mail world, the trust anchor is actually controlled by the domain owner with the creation of a validation record in the DNS system. Right, so as long as you trust your DNS or you trust DNSSEC. Because we trust DNS, right? Yeah, and if you're using DNSSEC, now you're really only trusting one anchor. Yes, the TLD root. Right. And that was one of my slides. Um, but I'm... So you're going from... I'm a little paranoid, Jeff. I actually don't trust anybody. Right, right. So I've yeah. actually baked mechanisms into the protocols that defend against some of the style of attacks that you could do against that very trust anchor. Right. Now, whether or not every domain implements them or not, it's up to, to be seen. Yeah, it's up to them to make um, up their own mind what they want to do. But there, there's one of the things we have is the chain of custody, um, where you sign every key rotation with your previous private key. Right. So I believe we talked about this a couple of months back. So it's the idea um, that once you've established a relationship with somebody, even if somebody in the future tries to do a man in the middle attack on your key, um, that would give you a warning. Right. Well, how would you see it? How would it present itself? Um, it presents itself with a nice little pop-up. Oh, we love do. those. Okay, so you would see somebody. And it would say, you know, there's been a break in the chain of custody for darktangent at defcon.org's right. um, email address. Um, this could be something innocuous, like a password reset, or something nefarious, like a man in the middle attack. Right. You should contact this person via another channel. Another channel, and kind of out of band, figure out what's exactly. going on. Right. It could, so then, of course, 99% of the people will just click ignore. Right. You have to make that button really small and hard yeah. to find. It moves around the screen, like you can't ignore it. That's actually a really good idea. <laughs> I thought so you have about, to be really dedicated to ignoring it. I, I'm big on this, putting the stuff I don't want users to do on the left and the stuff I want them to do on the right. So OK's on the right, cancels on the left, uh, and you kind of keep that consistency between the two so you don't accidentally get, used, yeah. get them mixed up. But the idea of moving that OK button around the screen <laughs> is actually kind of, kind of a good one. You got to really want it. Um, so when can we see this? How will it be? Like, is it a is it a plugin? Is it a new mail app? Is it a we a proxy okay, server? So the the server code um, we're building atop the bones of what used to underpin Lava. Okay. Um, so we Lava bit lives again. <laughs> the technology, if not the service. Yeah. Um, so we just started integrating support for the protocol mechanisms into that server code base. Okay. And we've also forked the Thunderbird code yeah. and we're rebranding it Volcano and it's going to be our test bed for supporting these kinds of extensions in the client. So if I fast forward like to next DEF CON, what can I expect to be happening by next year? Volcano will be out, erupting? Yes. I'm, I'm hoping it'll even be out in time for chaos. Oh, awesome. You know, at least in some form of hey, it kind of works most of the time capacity. Yeah, come help us, we're fine. Yeah. Well, no, I'm already in the come help us. Oh, Please okay. desperately Oh, vote. okay, cool. Uh, because we've got a lot of code to write, and it's hard to find good devs. So if people watching this, how can they get involved? How can they help you? Are there things they can do to like uh, help you test or help you uh, monitor? Or? I'm hoping within the next couple of weeks we'll be able to take the um, the papers, the documentation that we've been working on and start getting those out on the internet 
so maybe they can comment on the papers and provide feedback. Yeah, and you know, one of the best places to look right now for solid technical information is the presentation I gave here. It's kind of the first chance that I've gotten into some of the weeds about how um, the different formats work, and you know, I even went down to a binary level in a couple of cases. So I don't, unfortunately, I don't think we have the docs to the point that somebody could just take them and build their own implementation. Yeah, like the implementation. But that's what we're working towards, and de we'll definitely have that out. Um, by December, and like I said, hopefully we'll have awesome. enough of the pieces working that you can start playing with it. So maybe around Christmas time, we'll do another interview with you, and we'll get an update yeah. on how or this. Will you be at Chaos, or I've do you try and stay away from the competition? No, no, no. I love the competition. I mean, it's great. Yeah. I mean, the, the community is great. It's just it always is so close to Christmas time with my family. It's so hard to get out of the West Coast. And you just need to buy a faster airplane. I need to, I need to buy an airplane <laughs> and make it go faster. That's <laughs> a two-part problem. It sounds like a cool hack. Yeah, yeah, but I'd love to go. I've always wanted to go. So. Very good. Thanks for, thanks for your presentation. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Right. See you guys.